Greetings all, Bruno Luce here with GLB Productions. Thanks for joining us for this video. Today, I'm going to show you how to clean a dirty mixing console. Now, as you can see here on my right, I have a mixing console which has not been cleaned for about five years. The story behind this guy is that he was used for a variety of jobs, some schoolwork, some sound reinforcement work, and for the last five years or so, he's been sitting in a tape editing suite. Basically, uh, it's a situation where they're transferring all cassette tapes onto digital media, and this mixer was used as the interface between the cassette player and the digital recorder. Rather than plug the cassette player directly into the recorder, it was run through the mixer, mainly for monitoring purposes, rather than use the headphone output on the cassette deck itself. And so it sat and it sat and it sat and got progressively more dusty and dirty and horrible. Today, we're gonna clean it and make it look like new. So first of all, let me give you a good view of this console. As you can see, because it's been sitting for so long and hasn't been cleaned, it is covered with this really thick layer of dirt and dust. Now, I chose this mixer for this video because this really is an extreme case. In most circumstances, especially with sound reinforcement consoles that are constantly being moved from one show to the next, you would never have a buildup this severe. But as you can see, on virtually all the surfaces of the mixer, especially in between the knobs and on the tops of the knobs themselves, there is this real thick buildup of dust. This is not good for the mixer because dust attracts moisture and if it finds its way into the slots, for example, between the faders, it can actually cause noise. It can cause crackling or popping noises when the faders are moved because that dust and dirt uh, deposits itself on all the contact points. And this can be the cause of dropouts. It can also be the cause of intermittent connections. So for this reason, it's really important to try and keep the surface of your mixer clean. If the surface of the mixer is clean, it means less chance for dust and dirt finding its way into the insides of the mixer itself. Now before we begin the actual cleaning process, I'd like to show you the main tool that we're going to use. As you can see, the most important tool that you can have when keeping your mixer clean is just a simple paintbrush. Now I've got a couple of them here of different widths. The actual size of the brush is not important. The main thing is that the height of the bristles should be greater than the tallest knobs on your mixer. Uh, some mixers have dual concentric knobs, meaning knobs that are stacked one on top of the other. With those taller knobs, it's particularly important that you choose a paintbrush which has these deep bristles because if you do not, there's a small chance that you could actually bend the knobs if you bang this metal collar into them. This is the most basic tool and every mixer should be provided with one of these brushes. Now, needless to say, uh, you should not use a paintbrush that has been used for painting. <laughs> also, I recommend simply buying a new one and I also recommend that you buy one which has light colored bristles like these. The problem with a black bristled brush is that it does not show when it's dirty. Now I've used this particular brush here for a number of years and although you can see that it's beginning to get a little bit dirty here, I still keep using it mainly because it works so well and uh, it still does the job. Most of what I'm going to tell you today uh, comes from the book that you can see here. This book, uh, the Live Sound Manual uh, from Backbeat Books, is an invaluable resource. As you can see here, it's quite a compendious tome and it's full of very, very, very valuable information on all things to do with live sound and sound reinforcement. Uh, strongly recommended reading if you have the time. 
The next step in this process is to try and orient the mixer in such a way that whatever dirt you clean off will fall away from the mixer rather than back into the slots and crevices that exist within the control surface itself. With a small console like this one, you can actually stand it up on its end. Uh, you can see that I've used some non-slip matting to prevent the uh, bottom of the mixer from coming out. With a really large console, like say you're working on a Midas Heritage or something like that, it may not be possible to stand the console up, but you can at least try and angle it in such a way such that the dirt falls away from the console rather than back into it. This is especially important when you're cleaning the connection fields here. Uh, if you've got a console where the connectors are on the back surface, in other words, they are not facing up but uh, on a vertical plane, that makes your job considerably easier. Okay, now let's begin here. Um, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just begin, I'm going to work from the top of the console down in the same way as you would wash a car. The idea is that you want to clean downwards such that the loosened dirt falls uh, down away from the areas that you have cleaned. So here we go. Now, as you work, it's important to not just, to, to sort of um, not try and do too much at one time. As you can see, I'm concentrating on the top right hand corner and I'm using both vertical as well as horizontal strokes. The idea being to get one section as clean as possible before moving on to the next. The camera does not pick this up too well, but using my eyes, I can already see that there's a substantial difference between this section and this section over here. Right, now we'll do this part of the console. When cleaning jack fields, it's particularly important that you go in both directions because the dust will accumulate uh, both. The dust is best removed with these two directions of cleaning. Take your time with this. Um, it's good if you set aside, you know, a day, a month or so to do regular dusting on all your consoles. Don't wait until they look like this. Okay. So you can see that now this part of the console is relatively dust free. I can run my finger over it and it's not too bad. Now this is not as clean as it could be, but it's definitely a lot better than this area down here. Moving the camera down, we'll begin to dust the, uh, the main channel section here. Now, when you do this, it's particularly important that you take your time and not rush. The reason being that you not only want to get in between the knobs, but you also want to try as far as you can to angle the brush slightly such that you get underneath the edges of the knobs. Once again, uh, remembering to work from top to bottom and to use both horizontal as well as vertical strokes. You can see that there are hairs falling out of my brush, that's okay. <laughs> Working over here. Now an even better approach if you can manage it is to actually turn the console on its side and the reason for that is that any dust that comes off will fall away from these fader slots. It's really important to try and keep dust and dirt out of these slots because if it contaminates the fader track, you will have crackling and all kinds of um, potential electricity issues there. You can see here the amount of loose dirt that we are loosening. Again, as you clean, remember to keep going over the other bits of the console. Just zoom in here to give you an idea of just, you know, how incredibly dirty this mixer is. It looks like it was unearthed together with Rip Van Winkle. 
The good thing is that most of this is relatively easy to clean. If you are in the unfortunate situation of having something like beer or, or foodstuffs or ketchup or something like that fall on your mixer, obviously this sort of technique is not going to work and you may have to resort to actually uh, taking the mixer to a professional shop to have it cleaned. This kind of cleaning is the sort of thing that you can do by yourself um, in, a, in a field situation or in between shows, anything like that. As they used to say, an ounce of maintenance is worth a pound of cure. So you can see there how in just a few minutes we have improved the look of this mixing console tremendously. And now we come to the very bottom of the console. The reason that I've turned the mixer upright again is because when I clean these slots here, again, I want the dirt to fall away and not have it go into that slot itself. On higher quality mixers, there will actually be a lip seal here, which opens up uh, very much like a zipper as the fader passes and helps to stop dirt and so on going in here. This being a lower cost mixer, there's no such seal and as a result you have to be particularly careful when cleaning this area. So what I will do is I will clean the top of the mixer track first. Excuse me, the top of the fader track. Again, being careful to as far as possible not run my brush across the actual openings. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place all the faders in their fully up position and then I'll clean the faders themselves. Once that's done, I can clean the remainder of the mixer. And there we go. As you can see, this mixer looks about a thousand times better than it used to. And it probably sounds a little bit better as well. <laughs> now what about cleaning the actual potentiometers that are contained within the mixer? Some people use spray cleaners but the book that I showed you advises against that simply because spray cleaners can actually dissolve the contact material as well as the lubrication within the potentiometer and then you'll have a problem worse than the one that you started with. What that book advises is actually turning all the knobs back and forth like this 30 to 100 times per knob. Now that's an awful lot of knob turning uh, but it does help to clean the contacts within the pot. Similarly with the faders what you would do is you would simply run the fader up and down about 20 to 30 times and this has the effect of wiping dirt off of the contact track within there. Obviously with a digital board or with a VCA board, the audio does not pass through the fader, so this is not so critical as with a normal analog board like this. In terms of finding who's going to do all of that knob twisting for you, well, you're on your own on that one. Now, one of the more unusual pieces of advice that the book Live Sound Manual has on cleaning mixes is the use of Armorall which is, as you can see, actually a car care product for cleaning pro audio equipment. On page 176, the book actually says here, one substance that appears to do most of what you want with the least hazard is a proprietary cleaner called Armorall. Sold by car accessory shops, it's a milky liquid that is pump sprayed over the panel and knobs you want to clean. All that's then required is to brush it all over the offending area and crevices with a soft paintbrush. Then rub away or pull off with tissue paper or other absorber. This process leaves largely polished surfaces 
that are also anti-static treated. Now, I personally am very leery of spraying anything onto the control surface of a mixer. In my opinion, there's just too much chance of it finding its way into the internal circuitry and turning it into a big sticky gummy mess. What I would suggest is actually spraying the armor all onto a microfiber cloth like this one and then going over the surface of the mixer like that. I can confirm that Armorall does clean plastic surfaces extremely well and it's particularly suitable for cleaning areas of the mixer that do not have connectors. So if we just demonstrate on this area here, remember, spray the Armorall onto a cloth. Do not spray it directly onto the surface of the console and then just wipe. Now again, with this approach, you will have issues getting it in between the knobs and so on. That's why a, uh, a deep pile microfiber cloth like this is very, very helpful. Again, you know, a mixer doesn't have to look good to sound good, but especially if you do a lot of corporate work, the way your gear looks, unfortunately, does make difference. Now, if I zoom in on this area here, again, it's not so clear on the camera, but it does look an awful lot better. It actually looks almost brand new. Let's try an area which has some knobs and faders, like this one down here. Once again, I'm gonna move to a new area of the cloth. Remembering, spray the armor all on the cloth, not directly onto the mixer, and then go to town. Uh, this is something for which the console can probably be put in its normal operating position. Again, try and get into all the crevices between the knobs themselves. If you really, really want to be anal with this sort of thing, you can actually remove the knobs. As you can see, removing the knobs makes it much, much easier to get your fingers in between them. Uh, needless to say, you want to make sure that the mixer is not powered on while you are doing this, yeah? <laughs> Common sense, really. All right. So as you can see there, it has really improved the look of this mixer a thousandfold. A combination of dusting and then working it over with this substance armor all. The cloth is uh, somewhat dirty as you can see there. It removes the surface contamination that is left over from the dusting itself. Now what I've done here is I have cleaned the whole of the master section with armor all while leaving the channel section uncleaned. And I must confess that I'm really impressed. Look at the difference between the look of the panel on the left side of your screen where the red knobs are and the master section. The mixer really does look like new. As we pan down, look at the area where the, where the mixer meters are. Look at the area between the return channels compared to the area on the left. What I did here was I decided that if I was gonna do it, I might as well do it properly. So I removed the knobs and cleaned underneath as well. A lot of dirt came off, but you can see that my results were rewarded. Probably the most visually impressive result was that of the faders themselves. Those of you who have these older RQ series mixers will know that they have sort of rubberized knobs which have really quite a nice feel. And these knobs cleaned up wonderfully well. As you can see, the knobs in the master section here, they look black, they look new, they look ready to go to work. Whereas these, they have a sort of a dusty look. Again, the panel cleaned up wonderfully and there was absolutely no damage to any of the lettering or the paint on the console itself. So this is really a way that you can give your old mixer a new lease of life.
So there we are, our finished product here. What was originally looking like something that had been dug up from my backyard to something that could almost pass for a brand new mixer. All you need is a paintbrush, a clean paintbrush, remember, microfiber cloth, and just a little bit of car care product. So that's how you clean a dirty mixing console. Obviously, remember that if your mixing console is extremely dirty, such as a mixing console that's been contaminated with food, water, beer, that sort of thing, it's always best to bring it to a professional for a thorough evaluation and professional cleaning before you use it on the road. But for just day-to-day -day dust, dirt, grime, this system I find works very, very well. And to prove that I did in fact do the cleaning myself, there's our cloth. You can see all of that is what came off from the mixer that you see in front of you. What about you? What ways do you clean your mixer? Do you have techniques that I didn't cover here? If so, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Till the next time, this is Bruno Luce from GLB Productions. Take care and I'll see you soon.